Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Rotundi and today I'm going to be reviewing some social studies with you and we are going to be focusing on our civics unit for this week. So I am going to be going through our social studies text with you. I'm not going to read all of the information in the text, but I am going to review the topics that are covered in the text. And you may notice if you're taking a look at the text that some of the text matches what you'll find in your packet that you had for civics for social studies because those um, the words that are in your packet came out of the textbook. So hopefully the two things will go along together nicely. So this is where our um, chapter starts called Our America, Our Nation's Government and Its People. So let's jump right in. All right. So I am going to make this a little bit bigger in case you want to see it. And I'm going to start here on this page with keeping us safe. So when we're talking about government, one of the first things that people think about are laws and how the government is in charge of making laws. Well, that leads us to think about why do we even have rules and laws? So rules and laws are a little bit different from each other. A rule might be something like you might have a rule at your house that there's no running inside the house or no throwing balls inside the house, something like that. Okay, a law is a little bit different. You might have a law like cars have to stop at a red light or um, a law might be that you can't litter, okay? So, the difference between a rule and a law is that rules are kind of informal things that you follow maybe at school or at home or at daycare and they help people keep people safe in those places but it's not the government who's telling you what to do then okay when it's the government telling you what to do that's a law and when the government tells you what to do with a law then the government can also punish you if you don't follow the laws, okay? Whereas if you don't follow the rules at home, that's probably going to be your parents punishing you, right? Okay, so our government's job is to make laws. That's one of the most important jobs they have. And we vote for people that we think will do a good job with coming up with new laws for our country. And the government also has to make sure that people are following the laws and they have to punish people who don't follow the laws. So those are the three main jobs of our government is to make new laws, to make sure people are following the laws, and to punish anybody who decides to break the laws. Okay, I'm going to scooch over here a little bit. So in our country we have different levels of lawmakers. We start at the smallest level would be our community lawmakers. So like for Hanover County, we vote for people to make the laws for our county. And we have certain laws that are just for this community, just for our small county. Then if you get a little bit bigger, we vote for people who are going to make the laws for the whole state of Virginia. Like for instance, we vote for our state senators who are going to make laws for us and they work in the city of Richmond. That's the capital of Virginia. So they work in the city of Richmond to make laws for us. Then you can get to even bigger government and our biggest government is the federal government. So the federal government, we pick people who are going to help us make laws for the whole country. And the people who are making those laws work in Washington, D.C. That's the capital for our whole country. So we have government that's small for smaller communities like Hanover County. It gets bigger for each state. And then we have our whole federal government that works for the whole country together. And when we were coming up with ideas for how to put this government together, we used ideas from ancient Greece and ancient Rome. So if you think back to what we studied about them and their governments, the direct democracy of ancient Greece and the representative democracy of ancient Rome, we took ideas from those and pieced them together to make our own form of government, our own democracy that we have now in the United States. 
Right now, I'm going to pause here because in your packet, at this point, you have a chart that you're supposed to fill out. And I feel like there aren't a whole lot of directions for the chart, so I want to help you out with that. So I'm going to switch over to another page here. So this is what the chart really is supposed to look like. I know the headings inside these boxes are a little different, but I think that they make a little more sense if you think of it as problem, solution, and result. So we're thinking about a problem that we might have in our community, a solution that the government could come up with, and then what the result would be based on that solution. Okay, so I thought of a couple of ideas to give you as examples, and then you could come up with your own ideas to put on your chart. So one problem might be that there are too many car accidents at an intersection. So what might the government step in and do? They might put a stoplight at the intersection. And we know that when we see a stoplight, we have to obey the laws that go along with the stoplight. And the result of that is going to be that there are fewer car accidents at the intersection. So that's a way government was able to find a problem in our community and make a solution for it. Another problem I thought about is that the government needs money to pay for things like the stoplights and schools and police officers and firefighters and roads. All of those things have to have money to pay for them. So where's the government going to get money? And their solution is the government charges everyone taxes. So there's different types of taxes. Your parents, um, when they work a job, they're paying taxes from their paychecks. When you go to the store and buy a toy, you're paying taxes on your toy. So there's lots of different types of taxes to help the gov get, government get money. And then the result is that everyone helps to pay for the things that the community needs. So by everybody pitching in and paying those taxes, everybody gets schools and police officers, firefighters, roads, those types of things that they need, okay? So for your chart, you can just draw it on a piece of paper looking like this with problem, solution, and result. You can think of a problem that there might be in your community and a solution that the government could propose and what the result would be after they put their solution in place, all right? So hopefully that gave you a little bit better idea what to do for that activity. Okay, let's go to the next page here. And this one is titled, We Are Equal. And that's a really important part of what we believe in our government here in the United States. So we believe that every person has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So that just means that we believe everybody should have a chance to get out there and live their lives the way that they think they want to live it, do the job that they think is going to make them happy, and um, have freedom to make choices about the things that they do in their life. All right, and so once you become 18 years old, you get to participate in our government. So when you turn 18, that means you can vote. So voting is a really important job of citizens in the United States. We need everybody to vote so that we can get ideas from everybody about what they want to see in our government. So by voting for a certain person, you're saying that, that you like their ideas and you think they will make good decisions for our government. So it's really important that you get out there and vote so that we can pick the best person for each of these different jobs that we have for the government. And some of the things that you might have to vote for, you might have to vote for the president of the United States. So the president doesn't make laws. That's not his job. The president's job is to help um, enforce laws. So he's making sure that people follow the laws of the country. So you need to pick somebody that you think would be good at that job and who you think believes the th same things you do about that job. You can also vote for people for Congress. Those are the people who are going to be making the laws, okay? So that's just two examples of people that you might be voting for. You could also be voting in smaller elections, like if you live in um, a town, you might need to vote for your town council members. Um, you might need to vote in your state election for your governor. 
So lots of different people and jobs that you have to vote for. And that's a really important job of any citizen to get out there and vote. Then let's talk about people from all over the world coming to the United States. So the United States has been a place where lots of people come from other parts of the world to live because they like these ideas of equality, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They think that sounds like a great idea. They want their voices to be heard in voting. So they come to live here in the United States with us because they also want to be treated equally. So that means we have lots of people that have come from all over the world to live here. So let's see what's so good about that. So when people come from all over the world, they not only just come and start living here, they bring things along with them from where they came. They bring their, the types of clothes that they wore, the types of food that they ate, the music that they listened to, their different traditions and customs. All of those things can be part of someone's ethnic origin. So when they leave the um, community that they were born in, they bring some of those customs along with them. And then those customs, when you have them coming from all places all over the world, get blended together here in the United States for some pretty cool results. So let's take a look 